begin our song service tonight by turning to number 349. Number 349, the hardback hymnals. Let's sing the first and the last verse of this one. On our prayer list tonight, we've been asked to remember Bill Cromer, Logan Mullins, <coughs> Mike Livers, Maddie Wheat, Juanita and Coleman Detheridge, Joyce McComb, Gene Botkins, Ron Argenbright, James and Peachy Boone, Charlene Pennington, Diana Bennett, Steve Thompson, Brandy Meese, and the family of Brian Mullins. So uh, let's remember those in our prayers. Number 349. <clears throat> When my work on earth is ended, will the angels come for me? Will they bear me on their pinions or the dark and stormy sea? Will the angels come for me?
first and last verse, number 445. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation who seek that grand abode.
to say thank you to the brethren here for allowing me the opportunity to speak before you this afternoon. I hope what I have to say will be encouraging and uh, will be uh, beneficial to all those that are here. Uh, my name is Jeremiah Folger. Uh, I attend uh, Bandy. Uh, I was told that I probably ought to introduce myself. I know a lot of you, but some of you I do not know. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, this afternoon, are you a sheep or a wolf? One of the things I think about when I think about wolves among sheep is the cartoon Looney Tunes. I'm sure that we all remember when the coyote was trying to get the sheep. The poor coyote tried everything from digging tunnels to even wearing a sheep costume. But no matter what the coyote tried, the sheepdog was there to try and protect the sheep. For our reading today, we will be reading from Acts chapter 20, verses 28 through 31. The Bible says, Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the, the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. With this reading before our minds, let us go to God in a word of prayer. I'm sure at this time we all have many things to be thankful for, so let's go to the Heavenly Father in a word of prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this another day. You have blessed us with it, the sunshine, the rain, the fruitful seasons. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your dear Son who came down from above, suffered for dead, and died on the cross for the sins of the world, that we might through him have eternal life. And Heavenly Father, we pray for the church that it would always shine as a bright light on a hill and never be hid. Heavenly Father, before the world could see it and want to see what it's all about, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. We pray that we would study it, show ourselves to prove, and become workmen rightly dividing the word of truth, the word of a grow or by end, and be ready to give an answer to anyone that would ask us of the hope that is within us. Heavenly Father, we pray for the young brethren that is going to stand before us tonight. We pray that you give him a much liked word to where when we leave here, we can say it's been good to be at your house and have our souls refreshed with another portion of thy word. Heavenly Father, we pray for the widows and the orphans. We pray that we would assist them in a way to be pleasing with thee. And Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are bringing up children, that they bring them up and nurture the admonition of the Lord, that when they grow old, they may not turn from it. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd reach down with your wide hand and long arm and restore a portion of all those that have been on the prayer list listed, and those that are around the community that are in hospitals, homesick beds, nursing homes, or wherever they may be, Heavenly Father, that you would restore them back a portion of their health, realizing that you are the great physician and the healer of all diseases. Heavenly Father, we pray that we would always fear you and keep your commandments, realizing this is the whole duty of man. And Lord, we pray for our leaders of our country and land that they would never enact laws to where we would not be able to worship you in the spirit and the truth, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we pray tonight if there's one here that's never obeyed the gospel, that they would before it's everlasting and eternally too late. Or if there's one here that have obeyed it but have went back out into the world of sin, that they would come back making things right with you once more, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, Pray for those that have had lost loved ones. Uh, we pray for those that we would pray that to, for the ones that have lost loved ones that you would comfort them in this time of sorrow and in this time of need, Heavenly Father, in a way that would be pleasing with thee. Heavenly Father, we pray 
that you would be with us now. Watch over us, guide, guard, and direct us. For we ask this in Jesus' blessed holy name. Amen. Number 613. We'll get the first, second, and fourth verse. First, second, and fourth. <coughs> Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the first point is how do we become wolves? We'll read our uh, Acts chapter 20 verses 28 through 31 once again. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this that after my departure savage wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for, four, that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Brothers and sisters, this is going on among us, not necessarily in this congregation, but some in the brotherhood, and we have to be observant to keep the wolves away from the flock of God. This, these gospel teachers that were outstanding preachers in the past but now desire things of this world and a love of God's truth is not their top priority. Their problem started when they let their first little bit of sin sear their conscience. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with hot iron. This sin is a progressive thing. For the most part, you don't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to be the world's worst sinner. It takes that searing time after time that gets you to the point that you no longer blush when you think about something sinful or you are involved in. In Psalms chapter 1, verse 1, 
The Bible says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. We can see from Psalms that at first we are around sin, whether it be hanging out with friends or family, and then we desire to be around that sin, whatever it may be. Then we are spending more time with this sin to point to the point we are involved with that sin. It causes us to separate, be separated from God. Whatever sin it is, it will take us further than we want to go and keep us longer than we want to stay. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45, Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45, the Bible says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return to my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. We need to make sure and clean out our minds of the filth of this world and to put our thoughts in a godly order. When we go home Sunday evening or Wednesday night, that doesn't need to be the last time we think about God or read his inspired word. Verse 45. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in, and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto, his, unto this wicked generation. We always need to be adding godly things to our memory. And always be thinking about God. And if we add the wrong things to our lives, and to our thoughts, we will become more of a friend of Satan. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 4, the Bible says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. These teachers, preachers, or servants of God, have turned to fables or lies. The love of God has been replaced for those things that make them feel good so they can continue in sin and never have a guilty conscience. Our second point is personal prevention. Have you ever noticed how when we get home from work or college, after a long hard day, all you want to do is maybe relax? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But why do we flip on the TV and watch things that are ungodly or immoral? In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-8, through 8, the Bible says, And besides this, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. I want to point out here, the Bible says your faith. This is not mommy's faith or daddy's faith, but it is your faith. Verse 6. And to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall ne neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The main way for us to prevent wolves from coming in among us is to prevent ourselves from becoming one. <clears throat> that can only happen if we are familiar with the Word of God. And that only comes from studying and applying its teachings. Many may think they do not have to study because they do not teach publicly, or maybe they're not a leader in the congregation. But studying is for everyone. This congregation here is only as strong as its weakest member. Paul told Timothy, uh, in te 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly div dividing the word of truth. Study means to exhort oneself, to make effort, give diligence. Young people nowadays have so much going on in school, they have sports or other activities. Then they have college, which takes years away from their studies of God's Word. And then they first start a family, and that takes time away from God's Word as well, due to taking care of children or going to work. But we need to make sure we 
get in the habit of setting down to read and study and to meditate on God's Word. If we all devote 15 to 20 minutes to reading or studying God's Word, we'll be better off. If we spend eight hours at work or at college, then we spend another eight hours sleeping and then four to five hours doing chores or homework, what do we do when we get done with all this? Do we watch TV? Do we play some sport until it's too late to give God 15 or 20 minutes? Where is God's slot in our schedule? If we study for 15 to 20 minutes, it furthers our knowledge of God's Word, but most of the time, those 15 or 20 minutes will turn into hours. A little side note, those of us that are parents or grandparents, uncles or aunts, do we let our children or relatives see us studying the Word of God? When our children are playing baseball or football, do we let them go to practice or to the game and miss assembling with the saints? Or do we make them come to services so they will know how important God is? Us as parents can do more harm to our children's spiritual life by letting them be too involved with worldly things. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Women also need to be of this frame of mind as well as the men. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Timothy's mother and grandmother's influence influenced him a great deal. They could not have had their great faith or influence over Timothy without the knowledge of the Scripture. In Acts chapter 18, verses 24 through 26, Acts chapter 18, verses 24 through 26. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he only, though he knew only the baptism of John. Verse 26. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue when Aquila and Priscilla heard him. They took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Priscilla had just as big of a part as her husband Aquila in privately teaching the great preacher Apollos the way of God more exactly. She could not have done that if she was ignorant of the word of God. In Titus chapter 2 verses 3 through 5, the older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanders, not given in too much wine, teachers of good things, that they should admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may, be, may not be blasphemed. Aged women are to teach in a private setting and in public setting to be a great example by their behavior. They learn how to be the example from the word of God, and might I add to this that if you are a brother or a sister, tearing or belittling another brother or sister, those are the works of the devil. If you have been a member of the body of Christ for many a years, the younger men or women should be able to learn from your example, but that is impossible if you're not what you should be. Build one another up. We see each other once a week, maybe twice a week for the most part. God has blessed us with another day, we need to encourage one another. Our third point, protecting the sheep. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 9, Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 19, excuse me. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 19, the Bible says, Again, the word of God, the word of the Lord, came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say to them, when I bring the, word, the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. When he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not, warn, does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself, but he who takes warning will save his life. Verse 6. 
But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not, that does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you sh shall hear the word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his, from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered your soul. Therefore, you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you say, If our transgression and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Therefore, you, O son of man, say to the children of your people, The righteousness of the righteous man shall, deliver, shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall because of it. The day that he turns from his wickedness, nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sins. Verse 13. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely die, or shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteousness or righteous works shall be remembered. But because of the iniquity that, has commit, that he has committed, he shall die. Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die if he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right. If the wicked restores the pledge, gives back what he has stolen, and walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins which he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right, he shall surely live, yet the children of your people say the way of the Lord is not fair, but it is their way which is not fair. When the righteous turns from his, from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die because of it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what, the, what is lawful and right, he shall live because of it. It could easily be said that those of us that preach are the watchmen. But we all need to be protecting the flock. We are all to know the word of God, so we will know when false doctrine is taught. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, the Bible says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another gospel, but there be some that trouble you, that would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. The word of God is perfect. Each one of us are flawed in some way, shape, or form. So why would we think that we could make the word of God better? In Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19, For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Example number, er, number four, example of wolves. In Acts chapter 20, verse 29, For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. We have been warned to watch the flock of God and to protect each one from the evil one. Even while the apostles were alive, they had to protect God's flock from evil people. In 3 John chapter 1, verse 9, 
I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Diotrephes wanted to be the ruler or the king. He wanted all control. He desired to this to the point he denied that the apostles had the authority of God. In Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 26 and 27, here priests have violated my law and have profaned my, my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am pro profane among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey, to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. Here Ezekiel, Israel has left its first love once again and has violated God's law and made what was evil good and what was good evil. Just like today, no one likes to mention God or religion because it's not popular and someone might have a guilty conscience because they're living in sin. They would much rather be dishonest and lead people down the road to hell for their own gain. In Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 through 5, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. This congregation at Ephesus was warned about following after false doctrine, and if the congregation didn't repent, their candlestick would be removed. And that is why, what happened. For that reason, there is not a body of Christ there today. For our last thought, I want to read a short paragraph about an old Indian, Indian before extending the invitation. An old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside of me, he said. It is a terrible fight, and it is between two wolves. One is evil, he is angry, envy, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, lies, false pride, and ego. It continued, the other is good, his joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside of you and inside of every other person, too. The grandson thought about it for a minute, and then he asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. Which wolf is growing inside of you? Have you been feeding the bad wolf? You should stop your evil thoughts or deeds now before the evil wolf is too big. You've heard the word this afternoon, so now you must believe, as in Mark 16 and 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. You must repent, as in, as in Luke 13 and 3 and verse 5, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You must confess Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, as in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will also confess before my Father, which is in heaven. And finally, you must be baptized in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you have been baptized for the remission of your sins, but you have sinned, then you must confess your faults. You must repent of your sins, confess your faults, and have prayers in James chapter 5 and verse 16, where the Bible says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If there is one in either case, we beg you come while we stand. And as we sing.
thank you everyone for your kind attention. Uh, I appreciate the invitation to be able to come and speak before you. Uh, I hope and trust that everything that I said was uh, according to God's word. If there's anything that I said that wasn't, please feel free to uh, see me after services. Uh, that is all that I have. I'll turn the services over to Brother Dover. and every one of us, our responsibility as Christians to make sure that we don't allow things to come into the church that uh, could harm the church, to divide the, the brethren, and uh, uh, and and it's uh, not always easy to uh, pick out the wolves from the sheep, but we, if we know God's word, it's not that difficult, and that's what we've got to know, and I think that's what he pointed out here tonight. Uh, to remain faithful to God's word and God's teaching, to study it every day and to uh, make it a part of our life as we do uh, getting up in the morning and uh, drinking a cup of coffee or whatever it is that we do first thing in the morning. Uh, you know, it should be as, uh, as close to us uh, as our food or uh, whatever it is that we do regularly. You know, studying God's word should be also that important to us. And if it is, then uh, we're not going to be deceived by wolves or uh, men that come uh, that come down the road that uh, uh, that try to deceive that ha that have deceived over the years and uh, cause the the church to be divided so many times. And we can see that in this neighborhood and every neighborhood uh, in the United States that. Uh, because of men wanting their own ways and uh, believing their own things. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us it's not in man to walk or to direct his own path. The only way that we can follow God is through the Bible. And uh, we've got to make sure that we do that at all times and not be deceived because uh, uh, Satan can appear as an angel and uh, he can cause us to be deceived think things that uh, that are not true and also accept things that are false so we have to be careful and uh, I think Jeremiah pointed that out real well tonight we appreciate him coming over and speaking for us and uh, he's done a really good job and uh, hopefully uh, in the future maybe he'll have time to come back again I know that uh, uh, Benjamin's coming back next month on the fourth Wednesday night and uh, uh, he's the one with the beard Appreciate Jeremiah, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we remember to pray for the, uh, those young men, and uh, also all the young men that desire to teach and preach God's word. That we pray for them, that they remain faithful, and uh, not allow themselves to be deceived by the world and uh, the world's treasures, because uh, uh, that's what happens to, uh, as he pointed out, many men have been uh, deceived by money or wealth and uh, it's caused many of them to go astray and uh, Paul even pointed that out that uh, uh, many of the faith have become shipwrecked uh, because of the love of money but uh, in 1 Timothy 6 and 10 but uh, uh, remember our service here Lord's Day morning uh, uh, remember all those that are sick uh, I know that uh, I don't know if it, uh, all of you know that but Dorothy Lovell fell a few weeks ago and broke her other hip, and she's taking rehab over at Rockcastle County Hospital now, uh, trying to uh, 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 get back going again, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, she'll be able to be rehabbed and uh, be able to get back up and, and hopefully uh, regain her mobility. And uh, I know Mark said he was having to stay with her just about all the time now, some of the time when his brother comes up and stays, but uh, he said he's having to stay with her a lot. And uh, uh, also remember James Boone, he's in the hospital up here at uh, Mount Vernon, and uh, there's, many, there's many that are sick that, can, that cannot be here that would love to be here. And then there's some that, uh, that are not sick that should be here that are not. And uh, uh, that's, that's the sad part about it. There's a lot that could be here that are not, they have uh, really no reason, and uh, hopefully, uh, 
hopefully they will uh, be able to see that uh, that uh, the excuses that they're using or whatever it is that they're using to keep them away from the house of the Lord, uh, uh, they'll uh, put those behind them and come back to God. But uh, uh, let's remember to pray for each other. Remember all those that are sick uh, and also lost in sin. And, uh, and we all have many friends and relatives and uh, that need our prayers. So uh, uh, there is no other words or announcements. I think meeting with Brandon Stevens starts next week. The fourth. Brandon Stevens is going to be at Green Acres uh, the fourth. So uh, remember that. If you can make it down there, I guess that's on Wednesday. And uh, I know he, uh, he, does, he does a wonderful job. And if you can make it down to Green Acres, you'll enjoy listening to him and uh, uh, being uh, at Green Acres. We, we, yeah. It's going to say our meeting yeah. is staying on. It's the next the, week. Yeah, the 11th. The 11th. So uh, remember that also. And uh, hopefully uh, uh, both of them will be a great success. I know Stan's looking forward to coming down here and holding our meeting. He was here a couple of years ago and uh, done a wonderful work. And uh, uh, we look forward to having him back. So uh, now if there is no other words or announcements, we'll look to the Lord be dismissed in word of prayer. Our Almighty and righteous Father in heaven, how be thy great and holy name. Thank you for sending your only begotten Son who died on the cross for remission of our sins. We are, th we are thankful to come and worship your high and holy name. We pray what we heard this evening was in harmony to your word and will grow in our hearts. Please bless the sick and those who have been mentioned that they may recover their health and to be good and holy will. Please bless all the meetings that, that many good will come from them. We pray that you be with us as we leave here and bring us back to the next holy time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.